Welcome to another talk during our business analysis and product management community set days. If you ever wondered how to improve your skills and what it makes sense to pass a BA certification, this talk is definitely for you. My name is Jan Mazurek and I will be the host of today's meeting. And I have the privilege and pleasure of introducing the members of our roundtable who will share with you their thoughts and their experience of BA certifications. Our guests today are, we have Chandra Fabian, who is a lead business analyst from the United Kingdom with over seven years of experience in business analysis and 20 years of experience in playing in heavy metal bands. Uh, Lavinia Huzar, senior business analyst who, despite working for IPAM for only four months, she has over 10 years of BA experience and she is broadcasting to us today uh, live from Transylvania in Rom Romania. Olena Mitil, a lead business analyst from Kiev in, uh, in Ukraine with uh, two master's degrees in international economics and uh, business administration, will bring a lot of uh, to, the, to the conversation with her uh, experience in senior leadership and also uh, with her business analysis experience here at IPAM. Evgenia Popova, chief business analyst and a product manager from Ukraine, from Kharkiv, with over 10 years of experience in business analysis domain and with the background of uh, engineering uh, in nuclear physics. physics. And last but not least, we have Julia Tymoshenko, a BA team leader from Krakow, Poland, who, uh, just like Olena, has two degrees in economics, cybernetics, and applied economics as the first one, and economics law as the second. She is heading Krakow BA community practice, and she is responsible for helping our employees to improve their skills and knowledge. As you see, we have uh, specialists, special, specialists from many countries and with different backgrounds, but what do they have in common apart of, of being e-pamers? Well, they all hold various certifications such as uh, CBAV, Professional Scrum Product Owner, and many others. Today, they will share with you uh, their experience in which certification it is useful to apply for, how to prepare, and how to get ready to take your career as a business analyst to the next step. So guys, welcome to this conversation. I'm super happy to have you all here. And uh, could you please tell us uh, one by one, starting maybe with Evgenia, uh, how did you actually uh, identify uh, good certifications in your career and the ones that you applied for uh, as a business analyst? Okay, um, basically I've never considered others be a certification except uh, CBAP. So of course there are like um, certification from BMI, uh, there is IREP, but it was my dream <laughs> to be C CBAP. So this, uh, I don't know, in the beginning of my career, uh, I just heard about that and it, it was like, oh my God, it would be so cool to, to become C CBAP one, one day. <laughs> so it was just a dream and um, uh, no no chances for others <laughs> via certification. But of course, I also have certif uh, certification in uh, e-commerce domain from SAP and um, I have uh, product owner, product manage manager certification from SAP. So um, you probably should never stop. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Lavinia? So for me, pretty much it was the same. It was always TBAP. Uh, when I started, this was like a long dream sometime in the future. And I slowly started getting uh, all the prerequisites, basically. But just as a preparation for me, I kind of um, strayed it away for a bit and got a certificate uh, as a BA fund, uh, Business Analysis Foundation from the Business Charter Institute. But that was only to pretty much get me in the mindset for my long life dream, the CBAP as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Julia? So basically from my side, I will not open the new door saying that CBAP, yes, that is always a dream, I believe, for every junior business analyst. But what I could recommend here, whenever you're selecting uh, basically certification for yourself, you need to uh, be aligned with what you're doing currently, maybe with some domains, maybe with some platforms that you're using in your current role. And also... Sometimes it is too early for you to pass some certifications, for example, CBAP, it requires a lot of hours of experience and also a lot of trainings to be passed before. So sometimes you need to go step by step and to select something easier for you to train not only your BA skills, but also possibility to pass certification, because I believe there are separate skills to being able to pass any certification. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Olena? 
Yeah, and uh, continuing Yulia's recommendation, like uh, in my uh, case, it was um, uh, not just the dream. It was like, uh, uh, you know, guys, like challenge accepted, right? So when I started reviewing BA book, uh, everyone was telling that, oh, it's too hard to pass CBAB. Come on, you're just starting. And from my side, it was like, Oh, really? Let's try. <laughs> and so in a couple of years, I, uh, I really didn't have enough experience at first. I passed uh, successfully the CCBA one. And the next step was the CBAP. So it was like a great journey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. And Shandal? Okay, so for me, I, I wouldn't say that it was a dream, but it was more like a must have. So I started my career as a developer and I just started to work in business analysis positions first long years ago. And I just felt like I would need to have something like a formal study to, 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 to solidify my theoretical background and see what seemed to be, seemed to be a, a good choice for that. I already had a colleague um, uh, who had done this certification before and let, yeah, it, about the challenge, yeah, it looked like very difficult. So when you just go to the site and uh, see your location, how many people having uh, CBEP certification. Maybe it's much more than it was years ago, but it was not too many people. So it seemed to be like a challenging thing. And actually it was, <laughs> it was, it was not easy to get. What is so magical about CBAP? You all mentioned that this is, you know, this is a, the, the certification go to, and that this is the, the, the one that you all have and you all experience with. So uh, let me, yeah. can you, can you share with, with our audience? It's like this magical artifact that you get at the end of the game <laughs> when you pass the final level. That's how I saw it. So it's kind of special in the sense that it's from a renowned institution, the International Institute of Business Analysis. And it's like they're it was at least for a very long time their most coveted certification. Now there's another one that requires a bit more experience, but CBAP remains the most recognized uh, business analysis certification across the world. Pretty much, I would say if there's an equivalent, it would be the PMP from PMI. Um, so yeah, and also the prerequisites to getting this exam, the um, uh, all the work that you have to do, the hours that you have to put in and the experience makes it uh, not necessarily hard to obtain but it really makes you stay focused and it's kind of like a long time goal it's not something you decide to have tomorrow so yeah i would say that because it's so um you need so much dedication to get it an experience and it's recognized internationally i would say that that's why it's special mm -hmm. do, do you do you all agree do you, do, does any one of you want to add anything to what yeah, you, i just want to add that like mm -hmm. it's, it's like come on it is the highest recognition from International Institute of Business Analysis. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and uh, you did, Levine, you did mention um, about those those preparations and about those those things that that you need to. Uh, can anyone share with our audience what is actually needed? Um, if anyone from our from our participants of the of the um, community that days would like to apply for uh, CBAP. Okay. So maybe maybe, maybe, I, maybe mm -hmm. I can share. Mm -hmm. So uh, first of all, it's uh, plenty of work experience. So uh, it's like uh, seven and a half thousand uh, hours of work experience uh, during the last 10 years. And um, also the challenge uh, is that you need to map uh, like each hour to uh, the knowledge area. So, you know, there are six in the BA book and uh, you need to do this, all these calculations. Uh, another stuff, what you need uh, is to get professional development hours, uh, 35, uh, um, yeah, 35 of them. Uh, you can get uh, from um, endorsed education providers. Um, so it's like not um, like any course <laughs> can give you those. Uh, another stuff you can, um, you, need, you also need, uh, you need to provide uh, contact from your workplaces and uh, it's time, you know, when you need to build the bridges <laughs> back and <laughs> like, fortunately we have social networks and you can find people you worked with like 10 years ago. <laughs> so that like really helpful. 
And in those also, contexts, just just yeah. as a, as a, as a um, confirmation that you actually was working on those activities that you that you claim to be working. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and you need to not only like name and surname, you, you need also put some contact uh, so that like in case uh, your application form goes for audit, they will call to this person or write an email and ask to confirm that basically um, <laughs> they really. Um, know you and uh, confirm your working experience that you are your person and not an imposter trying to yeah. <laughs> get the certification <laughs> okay um when it comes to in general the preparation so maybe olena can you share how did you prepare it uh, because you did mention that you went first for for one certification and you went for 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 the other so can you share with us with us your journey uh, right. Uh, also, I would like to start with adding a little bit of tip uh, to Evgenia's uh, um, speech, right? So a part of the formal uh, prerequisites, um, a little like recommendation from my side, because I've passed that road. When you're opening that application and see all those knowledge areas, all those uh, uh, tasks, rights, and uh, duties that you need to perform as a business analyst, sometimes you are getting just lost because it, it's huge amount of uh, knowledge and tasks that you need to perform. But if uh, you uh, starting to prepare, right, one by one, or step by step, uh, a little tip uh, for those who want to prepare is just open that application in advance, review what are the prerequisites, right, and uh, try to map your daily activities on the projects to those no shares, right? Uh, and uh, coming closer to the answer uh, to the second topic as it was for me, right? Now, when I first opened that application for the CCBA even, <clears throat> I realized that I don't have that experience. So what do I need to do? I need to perform uh, those tasks, right? For CCBA, the, um, the elicitation of requirements is the most critical knowledge area, the uh, general knowledge about business analysis discipline. Uh, so I've tried to shape my daily activities on the project right uh, to those knowledge areas and to uh, take in more and more tasks uh, uh, somewhere i just uh, uh, jumped into the new projects new discoveries just to have that experience and in the end of the day when you're uh, going through that road when you're coming to the uh, application of uh, cbap right you're just you don't have to like struggle what to put there who are all those people you just know that you did that that task in that area on that project just because you're going one by one step so it was uh, like my experience maybe our colleagues will share their own mm -hmm. just in one second i will, I will go get, get your colleagues just want to mention to our audience who are watching us online that if you have any questions that you would like me to raise to to the to the speakers today please please feel free to go to the community Z portal to the Q&A section, write your questions over there, and I will be addressing your questions to the speaker. So uh, the more questions, the, the better. But now coming back to, to your preparation and your story in certification. So maybe Shandor, maybe you, you can share your story. Okay, so all in all, I felt like it was approximately three months of, uh, of preparation for this exam, but it's pretty uh, intense. So you might have the question how much time I need for that. It was around three months by, and with like daily uh, one or two hours of preparation. So it's pretty intense. If you want to do this in like three months time, you have to really dedicate your time uh, daily for that. Otherwise it could take like longer. Uh, I just went through, so don't underestimate this administrative part, collecting all your experiences for like uh, 7,500 hours. It's a lot and it's not easy. It's, it's not just about the contacts. You need to remember what uh, have you done like six years ago, for example, and it's just simply not very easy to do. Uh, when later on we will talk about the renewal, I will have a good hint for you uh, all because I've, I've done that once and I made a mistake and I can tell you what not to do actually. When mm -hmm. you so, but yeah. I, uh, I just went through all the knowledge areas. There are some uh, exam, uh, examples of uh, test questions as well. So, I can't quote uh, like links or resources for that, but if you just go to Google, you will find uh, like test exams. It's a very good way to, to, to do practice exams. However, you have to keep in mind that whatever you will find uh, on the internet and regardless of how, uh, how much time you will spend on searching, the exam will not be the same. So there will be some familiar questions, but the exam will not be the same. The other thing I would mention in preparation is that um, there are many good books uh, to read for prepare, but also uh, the Babbock book is 
is a must have really much you, you need to read that too and the exam itself will be very much focusing on the terminology and the phrases used in the tool so around half of the questions in the exam i think it was like 150 questions half of them were questions like i felt like okay i know the answer it's absolutely clear no risk in that i can i can uh, i can tell the right answer the other half was something like four possible answers and two of them were very very similar and the only difference was just a slightly different wording in terminology and you have to literally know letter by letter all the words and all the uh yeah all the phrases in the yeah, especially if, if if in if in one question you have uh, option one and option b and then other other answer you have option one or option b and then, yeah. then it's just so it's tricky it's tricky when i uh yeah on the exam i felt like after the exam oh my god i'm not sure that i will have it but yeah finally it uh it was it, okay it arrived and, you have yeah. to very much focus on precisely learning the terminology and phrases and understanding them is also important because if you do not understand them then then it's very hard to learn and yeah we, uh, i feel like that i share too much information <laughs> you can ask others as well but i have one more hint which is i think would be important basically i believe that i could proceed and follow up with a, this language mm -hmm. uh, we had babok academy organized for our repamers and we had students there and what one of them shared with us i believe that is very remarkable highlight that you need to understand babokish language you need to feel that in some period of time when you're spending reading reading passing simulations then you have this feeling of babok language because really sometimes that is very the same answer you need to know exactly and precisely which wording babok is using and here please be careful because babok first of all that is b book of knowledge that doesn't mean that it is b in a t book of knowledge that means that there you could be basically faced with some terminology that you're not using exactly like that in your real life as a t business analyst that is first uh, trap let's say where you could say oh what yeah. it is yeah uh, second and this basically advice and this tip you will find in majority of courses like on udemy plural site and others please forget about your real life experience just forget about that one you need to focus on babok not on what you're doing what you believe needs to be done just theory and this book uh, talking about preparation, yes, I could confirm basically majority of our students told after they passed that they needed like two, three months basically of preparation and very intensive one, like a couple of hours per day. Uh, and definitely simulation. Without simulation, I believe that is very hard or almost not possible to pass this exam. So yes, that is where you need to find uh, more official ones like directly from IAB website or maybe some others that you could use in order to practice. Practice, practice and practice. Yeah. Jan, back to you. Yeah, apologies. I, I had some some technical difficulties and I got disconnected for a second, but now, now that I'm back. Yeah, uh, I would also add something. So mm -hmm. um, be prepared that um, like, um, you have, yeah, like you have many experience and it's like, okay, um, I know everything. I read my book and what can happen. So I'm almost ready. So that was uh, like my thought when I started preparation. And then uh, I just, um, so went through the watermark uh, test, uh, got 20% uh, out of 100 I was really upset because I I thought I was almost there, you know. So uh, you must be ready that um, you'll probably be freaking out uh, with the volume uh, and level of details you need to learn at the beginning. And uh, you will be terrified and don't know even where to start. <laughs> and trust me, I've, I've been in that situation. And uh, so it's really um, emotionally... Um, uh, not um, like not easy <laughs> right mm -hmm. uh, so um, you need to understand what you need to know to to be ready to go for exam so um, I would say um, you need of course know uh, the book so um, it's like you need to know um, all the knowledge areas uh, all the techniques of in each knowledge area, you need to know like input, output, stakeholders, and techniques applied. And um, 
uh, also you need to um, to be able to calculate uh, so in my real real life work at that moment i haven't uh, done any calculations uh, in business analysis but you need to be able to calculate like uh, return of, of investments uh, and and so on and so on so each um, formula in financial um, section uh, you need to be able to um, calculate it so mm -hmm. that's another tip i wanted to share <laughs> Mm -hmm. Evgenia, do you want to add anything? In yeah, terms of speaking tips? of calculations, <laughs> since Evgenia mentioned them, so before you even get to the exam, I think one of the first challenges that I had in terms of calculations was actually mapping those required hours to the knowledge areas, because as, as Evgenia previously mentioned, you do need uh, 7,500 hours, but you need exactly at least 900 in at least four knowledge areas, right? So you really have to look back on your past and your experience and really try to figure out where would this experience match in terms of knowledge areas and how much did I work and make sure you actually do the math correctly that you have those 3,600 hours in four different areas. And in terms of preparations, I guess um, Shandor mentioned three months, but I guess this depends on how much time do you have, how fast do you study. For me, I think I did a, a very bad mistake of, of marking just one and a half month, and it was horrible. <laughs> I had to take days off of work to study. And um, yeah, I pretty much only used the, uh, the Babook for, for studying because like um, uh, Yulia mentioned, it's pretty much the basic thing you're going to use in terms of terminology and really need to get into that uh, bamboo land kind of mentality. And another thing that really, really helped me after every knowledge area and every chapter, I would do tests. And after two knowledge areas, I would do tests out of the two knowledge areas and so on. And I kept on going very agile, like incremental uh, until I finally was able to do like full mock tests. And also don't get discouraged if you don't pass on those tests. Um, I haven't had one question that was identical to the actual exam, but they were similar. So even I if I was a bit concerned that I was getting maybe 80 or 70% out of the grades, uh, when it came to the final exam, I, I it was a completely different experience and it all came back rushing in. But yeah, leave as much time as you know, it will be necessary and try to read the bar book at least four or five times before even scheduling for the exam. Mm -hmm. That would be my advice. Also one advice from, from a colleague of mine that was passing the CBAP certification. Uh, he was uh, passing this when uh, bar book vers vers version three was released, but the exams and tests were still on bar book version two. So that's also like for anyone who want to apply for the certification, make sure that uh, the, the version of the bubble you are studying is the one aligned with the with the exams. But uh, talking about outside of the, the CBAP uh, in particular, uh, first of all, why is it useful for our employees to, to get certification or why, why was it useful for you to, 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 to have this certification? So maybe Evgenia, could you, could you please share with us? Okay, so... Um... You know, uh, it is useful not even get, uh, getting certified, but it's useful uh, the time um, you are structuring your knowledge during preparation, because it really brings you to the next level in, in your professional activities. Um, and uh, of course, um, um, like for example, in, at IPAM, um, the CBIP certification is a prerequisite to apply for uh, chief business analyst assessment, and that was another <laughs> my goal in my professional career. So uh, to me, it's like it was the way to become chief business analyst. Mm -hmm. uh, Lavinia? So like Evgenia mentioned, I think that aside from the diploma and every benefit that comes with it, the biggest reward out of getting the certification is the actual knowledge that you'll get. So just forcing yourself to go through the book, to study, to do the tests, to understand better the knowledge areas, the tasks and everything um, brings your business analysis uh, level to uh, um, very much higher. And it really helps you in your career. You go from being um, just maybe like a be on a project, you can actually start mentoring other colleagues and help out on other projects because your level of understanding of what needs to be done for even for inception phases or planning on projects, the business analysis approach um, grows exponentially when, when you study for this exam. Mm -hmm. Olena? 
Yeah, for me, of course, it's the not the diploma itself or the certification itself, but for me, it's the diversity of knowledge, right, and the diversity of practices and the techniques that the BA professional might may use uh, upon this certification. So when I'm uh, when I was uh, starting the preparation, I was just reviewing those techniques, right, those uh, knowledge areas, and uh, while you're doing that, it gives you an opportunity to. Uh, practice that on your real projects and your real assignments, right? So it's going, uh, it's um, providing an opportunity to uh, start a project from scratch, right? So you definitely know what the BA needs to do to start the, effectively start the project, right? To elicit those requirements, how to do it, how to, I don't know, even manage customers' expectation, even uh, structure the agenda, right? How to use those, te those techniques, et cetera. And so when you're joining from the other side, right? When you're joining an ongoing project, a big one, enterprise, for example, you're able to assess what's like uh, what's the troubles here right in case of any if everything going smooth then you are able to um, provide any um, efficient improvements right any process improvements and you're just having all that map of business analysis in your mind right and you uh, can uh, suggest or advise any improvements like creating a puzzle you know that for example this uh, I don't know, the solution evaluation, right, is uh, a little bit struggling on the face of discovery, right? What, are we, what do we need to do there? And one by one, it, it just pops up in your head and you just know what to do. So for me, it's like very inspiring from one side and very useful and beneficial uh, as a professional, uh, in the professional way of working, I mean. Mm -hmm. Julia? So from my side, first of all, that is a very quick way to prove your experience and your knowledge. So basically that is worldwide recognized certifications. And we are talking not only about CBAP, we have a lot of Scrum related, SAFE related, some domains like Hybris, for example, certification, Magenta certification and others. Basically, whenever you have that, you could just show and say, yep, I'm there. I'm in that special club. I know what you passed in case you're talking with certified business analyst and they also know what you did for that in order to be there. Uh, second part, uh, you just like used to uh, pass this kind of certification. For example, in EPAM also internally we have assessments and I passed three assessments during the last three years already. I'm like, okay, one more, more assessment, less, that is not so big deal. Of course, I will be nervous. Of course, I will be preparing for my next one, but still you have this feeling, yes, I can, yes, I can. And that is also helping you in stressful situations whenever you have those on project with your clients, with stakeholders, with managers whenever you're proposing some ideas then you yes i could do that you believe in yourself uh, also that is very good opportunity to meet people focused basically on similar stuff because for example for cbap certification for scrum related certifications there are a lot of blogs discussions groups okay how you did that what to do let's talk let's discuss we had this babok academy so you could meet people you could see their experience you could share with each other and that is very nice opportunity uh, and basically reading several times, even Babok, even in case you're already certified, that is a good chance to find something new, still to find something new for you. Whenever I read Babok first time, it was, okay, that's obvious. What is there? Why everybody saying that? That is a Bible for business analysts. But with years, I'm reading, rereading that, and still I'm finding something new. And for some of people that is like a hunter game. Yes, I have one more certification. I have one more page. So for some of that, it is really something funny and like gamification. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I have to agree with everything that you said. A part of the first sentence when you start, when you said that it is a very quick way to, to, to show your experience, judging by what you said with preparation and with uh, learning and, and studying for the, for the exam. Yeah, whenever you have that already, that is a quick way, just show and here I am. I. Whenever you have, yeah. yeah. And, and Sandor? Okay, so you, uh, you already heard about like potential career opportunities opening when you have this certificate, so obviously that's mm -hmm. there. The other thing which was very useful for me is to uh, giving a structure to my knowledge. So as I mentioned, I started my career as a developer, not as a business analyst. And I just simply ad hoc made a decision to, to become a BA. But it just happened, I'm not saying overnight, but I started to work for a company where I was a BA, but no formal studies before that. So I just started to follow their practices, 
their ways of working and so on without reading too much about that. And uh, yes, over the years I learned many things, but it was never structured. So getting this certification means that I have a good framework and structure of the knowledge. And uh, when I read the book, I just realized that, oh yes, I, I've done these things or, or those things and uh, all different activities related to the knowledge areas. I just didn't know that they called like this in, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a specific phrasing or, or wording. So yeah, the structure itself is, is, is a good thing. And also it's like a checklist. So you, you know that you might have missed something in your BE activities previously, and it gives you a, a very complete framework to think about um, all of the activities you need to hire for the business analysts in various projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, just just a word to those who are watching online, if you have just joined us, what we are talking about right now is the um, various B certifications, why it is worth to, to get certification. We have uh, great experts who are sharing their experience and their knowledge on this and uh, still encouraging you to share questions in, uh, in our community Z portal to our audience. I will address um, our audience uh, at a later time with, with your questions. For now, uh, another question about the CBAP. Uh, some of the certifications for business analysis, they are with you for life. Like, you know, like when you have the professional scrum master certification, professional scrum product owner certification, you just go for it and you have it for life. Whereas the CBAP, that's a more tricky thing. So can you, you, you did already, Shandor sh shared a small spoiler that you need to have the certification renewal for this yeah. one. Yeah, exactly. So when you first uh, do this, you will have it for three years. And after three years, you need to, um, they call it, I think, recertification, something like that the process, but it's like really well. You don't need to take the exam again, but you need to do some administration also. In the future, it might happen that they will uh, ask for like differences. For example, when I've, when I've done it, it was version two, now it's version three. Also, you need to think about your professional experience in the past three years. And I made the mistake there. So when I went, uh, went for recertification, I, I needed to collect all this experience. But otherwise, when you, uh, when you make the certification, you will have a profile on the IIBA side and you can collect your professional experience continuously, not just at the end uh, of the three years when you need to collect. If you do this continuously, you will save a lot of, a lot of your time. And that, that would be my advice. So it's a mistake I made. And uh, yeah, in the next three certification, I would do better. But did you have to repeat it in that case, the whole exam and the whole process of, of documenting? Uh, not the exam itself for mm -hmm. me. It was just documenting your professional experiences. And there was one new thing, like, like the discussion we have currently. So I think there was something as a requirement and maybe the others can help me here, but there was something like a requirement about participating in conferences, panel discussions and so on. And it was not part of the original exam. So when I first read that, I, I needed to think, what can I tell in the past three years that matches this uh, requirement? So yeah, that was new, but uh, no exam retake. So it was just proving your professional experience, the same thing references context so if they want to audit and verify then they can do. Mm -hmm. do, do you do you have found it difficult to to uh, do this recertification and collect the artifacts actually i've got my cbap last year so i haven't done recertification yet mm -hmm. but uh, what uh, uh, makes me smile it's like okay do not leave everything at the last moment <laughs> You need to like log your work experience uh, now and uh, track like everything, um, like the talks you are given and so on now. And uh, um, I'm just thinking, okay, one year is already passed. <laughs> I haven't, so I really um, in, like did many stuff uh, in the business analysis uh, and contributed a lot, but I haven't blocked anything. So, <laughs> so, so you, you will use Sandra's advice and <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, I think as if you do this like once in a month, it's all right. But if you need to remember back three years, it's, it's going to be harder. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You're right. Thank you for advice. And, <laughs> so the perspective of the adding the work, um, experience, just a little tip guys, pay attention to the notifications that IAB site is providing <laughs> because when you, because, uh, those records that you are doing on that profile, you can edit it as a user only for one week. 
So after one week, they are non-editable. <laughs> and when I started, like uh, as per uh, Sanders' uh, advice, I also was um, you know, going time by time and um, uh, renewing my working experience. And just one time, I didn't finalize the uh, records, and then it was like. Yeah. a little bit of pain to <laughs> edit it and adjust so be careful with that <laughs> mm -hmm. Julia any, any thoughts for, about your, your recertification or also didn't have the, the chance to do no, this? No, no chance yet I had another comment basically what mm -hmm. Sanders told about checklist and now you have structured knowledge please be very careful with that one because I saw a lot of examples when people were certified and then saying yes now I will apply everything on my next project so that doesn't mean that you need to take Babook and now apply just everything go step by step and make your stakeholders really crazy. So please be careful with that one. That is very great that you have this knowledge. That is very great that you have structure and you know what could be done, but that does not mean that this must be done. So that is also advice what to do after certification. Please do not apply everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lavinia? So, yeah, in terms of um, recertification, I'm also in the process of doing it. I haven't completely done it. I still have a year and a half or so. But as per Shander's advice, I've been doing it for a while now, for a couple of months and adding my, my experience. But one thing I want to add that wasn't mentioned is that you need 60 development hours, so 60. Uh, and you can prove these hours by either being a speaker or being to conferences or going to conferences or writing articles. So there's quite a lot of ways in which you can get this 60 uh, development hours. Um, but you also need to pay, like um, Olena mentioned, pay very much attention to what you're marking down and make sure that one once it's there, it, it's good and it's going to stay. Mm -hmm. And um, in general, you pass the certification and how does passing the certification affects your life? What the change after passing uh, this the certification, apart of the fact that you, of course, have this now confirmation of, the, of this knowledge. So, I think, so, yeah, what, what yeah. for you? Maybe I had the most dramatic change, I would say. <laughs> so, after passing the certification, um, it didn't take, I think, less than a year, and I was offered a new job opportunity, and I actually got to move from the current company I was working uh, with in Romania, in Transylvania, I got to move to EPAM in Switzerland. So, um, I wouldn't say it was just because of the certification, but it most certainly played a major role in this. So it definitely opened up doors. Mm -hmm. And definitely, you know, welcome aboard at IPAM, you know, uh, best place to be, definitely. <laughs> so happy to have you as part of our IPAM family. Uh, Julia, what did change for you when you passed the certification? I couldn't say that also that is related directly to certification, but whenever you're ongoing learning something, whenever you're on that path, whenever you're communicating with people, you have new ideas. And for me, that was a year when basically I had a lot of experience. I also did audit, internal audit for our projects from BA perspective, and I found some possibilities and basically the idea that came to my mind brought two cities in Poland, Katowice and Krakow to be organizational rebuilt. Now we have competency-based organizations there. So sometimes that could be unexpected outcomes, uh, but definitely you do not need to stay just with your project, just with the same domain knowledge and not looking somewhere uh, over other books, certifications, trainings, and upskilling yourself. So please upskill yourself. Please proceed with that all the time. Mm -hmm. Olena, yeah, did, I, did of, anything change for you? Yeah, part of what I've mentioned already related to the different activities, right? When you are subscribe, when you are looking for for those and pushing yourself into those uh, unknown things for you. Of course, it's the career growth, so it's uh, great confirmation of your experience and uh, it makes you move and not stay on the same level so it's it's very important mm -hmm. Chantal? for me uh when i've done the certification in 2016 it was the time when i've i've been relocating from hungary to the uk and it was i've done this deliberately it was part of my preparation for the relocation so uh, at that time i had a promotion uh within epam as well and it was just a part of the preparation and I just want it to be like a more skilled, more valuable employee um, for like EPM UK. Mm -hmm. Eugenia? 
actually like um, the one tangible outcome that I already got <laughs> is uh, uh, to be positioned at IPAM and um, um, from other perspective. So I'm invited as a speaker on conferences. Um, everyone wants me as a mentor <laughs> and so on. So uh, kind of, you know, becoming popular, I would say. And uh, another outcome um, is on a way. So I probably share later when it came to come true. <laughs> okay. Uh, for those of you who are watching us online and don't know, uh, among over 2000 BAs at IPAM, we have only around 20 chief BAs. So this is as rare as almost like unicorns. So Eugenia, congratulations on being one of those uh, rare uh, chief BAs uh, in, our, in our company. But is it a must, uh, the CBAP, to apply for chief BA position? Um, Yes, so it's like prerequisites. Uh, basically, I mm, haven't checked if uh, if th th there is someone who haven't. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, from what I see now, from our skill matters, so yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So one more reason for our audience to participate in CBAP certification, if you want, if you are considering the chief BA position uh, at IPAM. So, so you can thank you, and once again, congratulations on, on this on this achievement. Thank you. Um, moving, moving forward. So, okay, you have the certification. There is some some benefit for you. Something has changed, but how much of the knowledge obtained in the certification and in the training and in the materials that you that you learn, how much you use on on your day to day work? So maybe Julia, can you can you kick off this this question? Uh, definitely that changed my work and my artifacts. So basically mm -hmm. you're applying that and you're also looking in the daily, on the daily basic activities from another angle. Uh, I couldn't say like from percentage perspective, it's very hard to count that, mm -hmm. but definitely a lot. And also some techniques that maybe you was not using so consciously now that is in place. Um, uh, so um, maybe like that. I don't know what else to add here. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Olena? Yeah, I think I could add uh, a part of the artifacts and the tasks or, or activities on the projects. Uh, personally, for me, it's also the opportunity to um, not to be that well known as Evgenia, of course, <laughs> but, <laughs> but to become a mentor for more junior colleagues, right, to um, take part in the interviewing process for EPAM when we are uh, looking for the best talents on the market, right? Sometimes people even after the interview uh, asking questions about, oh, what do you think about certifications? And we are starting those conversations, you know, and it's just great when you're communicating with people, you see those like uh, light, light in the eyes and they also want to to uh, step into that club and sometimes it's it's very useful for uh, your development uh, as a professional and to share your knowledge for those who is seeking for that mm -hmm. uh, Lavinia so um, percentage yeah I wouldn't be able to tell you but one thing that I've noticed at least after getting the certification I was more self-aware of the techniques used and I slowly started realizing that I could apply a lot of them not like Julia said not all of them <laughs> to scare the stakeholders but um, quite a big bunch of them so if I were to point out out of the 50 maybe even 40 so that's quite a lot of techniques not all at once of course but um it really helped with that and another huge thing that i noticed as a added benefit is regardless of your role so if you are moving maybe from uh, a more ba role on the project to a product owner or a product manager right uh the fact that you have the cbap and you also got all this knowledge will definitely help you in those roles growing into maybe a different path in your career so not necessarily going towards a chief BA in EPAM but you can also go towards a PO or product manager or project manager and definitely the CBAP has the right foundation to kind of guide you on your day-to-day -day activities in those roles as well so that's a huge added benefit from my point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, before we move Sandra to you just again want to mention for those who just joined us watching online we are talking right now about BA certifications why is it worth to apply for one why is it worth for um, preparing, preparing and what are the benefits for you in your career as a business analyst in order to obtain this, this certification so Sandra 
how much of this knowledge you use on your on your projects? Yeah, so it's very hard to say a percentage, but I can just I can just reiterate the others what the others mm -hmm. said. So yeah, it made me like more conscious of of using the actual techniques. The other thing I want to mention uh, here is that it could be sometimes challenging uh, to use this, but maybe it is worth um, uh, to spend the time on it and the effort on it. The reason is that when you learn this, you kind of speak a language, what is there in the Babok, but it's just one thing. If there are other BAs on the project, like uh, on the client side or, or anywhere else in your team, it's n uh, not obvious that everybody will speak that language. So, and as any other languages, uh, like English as we speak now, uh, it's like, it's very useful if everybody speaks the same language, but otherwise you need to you need to put some effort in maybe teaching this or encouraging the people to to use the same techniques to use the same terminology when you when you just simply simply just speak about various topics. Uh, you need to make sure that you, you use the same terminology because if you are the only one using this, then it, it's going to be like harder. Mm -hmm. Evgenia. Yeah, during the year I was preparing for CBP, I tried to apply techniques and uh, basically apply uh, in my current project uh, what was uh, like what was there, <laughs> because uh, you know you can read like uh, pros and cons of each technique, but in case you never tried it so you can't feel it on the on like from your experience so uh, and th that was great basically because previously uh, for example for um, elicitation requirements i used only interview like client interview okay let's have a call <laughs> and uh, that's it and uh, probably like uh, during on-site visits workshops and that's it but there are plenty of elicitation techniques and you need to be aware all, about all of them. And it's like a significant um, impact on uh, what you can do after that, because in case you just ate, it's like, okay, it's just theory. <laughs> you don't, don't have on hand experience on that. So this is like um, probably the most uh, powerful stuff <laughs> that I got from the preparation itself. Um, and of course, yes, in case, for example, uh, I'm conducting an interview um, for, like someone from market and I see CBIP certification, uh, it's like, okay, <laughs> I really, I really happy because I know that uh, we, will, we are going to have interesting discussion. We are going to have, you know, it's like, um, yeah, as Yulia mentioned, it's like uh, we are in the same club and uh, it's really interesting to communicate with those people who have the same base as you do. And uh, that's, yeah, that's another benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, you all play a key role at IPAM. You are all either leaders of the community or leaders in your location. You are a leader by title. So how you as the leader can help our employees grow and how you what, what kind of actions were, have you done in the past uh, in order to help to support them if someone is preparing for, for certification? So, Julia, I will start with you as you are the head of Krakow uh, BA uh, Center. So, sh share with us your tips. So, basically, we organized just some camps. So, we have Bobok Academy. Uh, we're still planning this to do this year as well. That is a great opportunity to spend around three months together with your colleagues, reading Babook, basically reviewing presentations, not only like directly from Bobok, but also from IAB and those courses that they're preparing. Also, we are buying a ZPAM simulations and we are doing exactly, I believe that Evgenia mentioned like that, chapter, then simulation, chapter, then simulation. That is basically how we are addressing this uh, complex questions and all this exam part. Uh, also, we have mentoring programs. So whenever a person is looking for some specific area, for some specific knowledge, then we have dedicated mentors uh, who basically could uh, help our employees. As well, we have online resources like LinkedIn Learning and other recommended websites like uh, wild, 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 well known, uh, Udemy plural site, and others where we are recommending where to go and what to review. Because, unfortunately, 
Unfortunately, not always when you see CBAB preparation for CBAB, that is really good training. And you have really enough knowledge inside that training that will allow you at least to get tips and tricks. Sometimes that is just overview what kind of experience you need to have for how to prepare, what kind of chapters you have in Babook, that is. But that is not enough. Mm -hmm. Olena, do you have something to, to add how, how we can yeah. help? A part of all that uh, Yulia have mentioned previously, I think uh, it was mentioning also the assessment process, right? So at EPAM, we're having the assessments uh, processes for people who want to grow in their uh, professional uh, titles. And uh, I'm uh, also acting as an expert on those assessments and it gives uh, like the opportunity for me to utilize that knowledge and also to ask some questions to push people to think in on to, to think you know on on their assessment sessions so uh it also um, a huge part of the development process at epam here and so uh, i would like to also mention the one interesting service that i, I don't know if it's okay to call it service but an activity uh, uh, that is called an uh, interviewing uh, across locations, right? So we are having this uh, certified interviewers service at EPAM, and it's cool. It's that cool when you're um, invited for an interview, for example, uh, with the candidate from, I don't know, Mexico or USA or uh, Krakow, and you are understanding each other, you are talking the same language, right? And if not, then uh, you know that, you know, the things that you can mention to that person to push him to think, right, to to uh, upgrade himself a little bit, to give recommendations. And I think it's, it's cool, not only for development of uh, people at EPAM, but on the market as well. Mm -hmm. Evgenia, being a chief business analyst and a mentor, how how can you help with, with obtaining yeah, the certification? So, yeah, I so basically previously I um, relied my mentoring program um, in global mentoring program on uh, the book as well, and not only on the book, of course. Uh, but uh, what I want uh, to mention is um, um, uh, East Ukraine business analysis community had. Uh, now I am trying to align, you know, like Vabok techniques and uh, Vabok uh, base of knowledge uh, with the on-hand experience, with um, on-hand tips um, guys can use on their projects. And um, most of our talks uh, which we have and uh, speakers who present, um, they uh, have the goal to align like theory with practice. Mm -hmm. Chandel? For me, I think it could be the technical interview mentoring. So, you know, we have the technical interviewers, we have certified technical interviews, interviewers within EPAM, we have certified technical interviewer mentors. It's such a long term. And uh, for technical interviewing, there's a part which is important, the coverage of the knowledge areas of the candidates. And I think uh, this, is, this, is, this is a point where, where the certification with all the knowledge areas can be like very useful to, to make sure that that an interviewer can 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 do a proper coverage of uh, of various B knowledge areas of a candidate, and yeah, that's where I can use the knowledge maybe in, in the interviewer mentoring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lavinia. Oh, okay, so just for sure, what I've used so far in terms of knowledge after getting the certification was pretty much creating and growing a community. I mean, not necessarily creating, more like growing a community of practice mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that everyone who's going through this process of learning is also sharing. So having a shared and common repository with all the resources and organized information. And also um, what I would recommend and what I've done personally is having one-on-one -on -one coaching on or mentoring sessions with um, not not only uh, BAs that want to take the CBAP certification, but people who are more like maybe not necessarily juniors, but somewhere around um, intermediate level, around the intermediate level, and are considering making the jump to a more senior position and are considering taking the exam um, in the mid to distant future. So I think that's where um, you can really apply your knowledge because if you're focusing specifically only on people who are already uh, subscribed and want to take the exam within the next months, they're already on a learning path and um, 
um, the eff the effort you put will be well received, but um, you can do more 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 effect with people that are a bit more juniors, maybe. Mm -hmm. I want to leave last minutes for the questions from the from the audience that that uh, they uh, address several questions, and I want to start with the first question to Olena, um, uh, because the question is. Is it worth to pass CCBA certification uh, before passing the CBAP if I don't have enough experience for CBAP and, and why? I should definitely a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to wait another two years just to have enough hours for the CBAP because when you're going to get prepared to the CCBA, you will be almost half prepared for the CBAP. And when you're going to apply for the CBAP, you will do that much more easier than if you will wait first of all and then apply for the sebab at once so my recommendation is definitely yes if the only reason is you are not having the enough uh, hours development and experience for the cbap mm -hmm. can any other b related certification be treated uh, as a as valuable thing for the recertification So question, question to you, all, right, if, if you know. You mean that uh, having another certification could be yeah. like a help yeah. for research? I don't remember that during the recertifications I asked for other certifications, so I'm not sure about that, but I, uh, I don't think it's necessary. Maybe maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. Guys. It's not necessary. It's also, I don't think it doesn't count for the rest certifications. You need uh, development units, so other certifications won't count. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, how can I evaluate my knowledge after reading the, the Babok book? Where can I find out the test practice and prepare for the certification? So I think for the, for the test practice, there, you, you did mention that there are online some several tests, but when it comes to evaluating the knowledge, can you give some tips uh, for, for, for our audience? So, maybe, um, yeah, please, please. <laughs> So maybe uh, with using online tests, there are a couple that are better than others. I'm not sure if we can say the name, <laughs> but uh, uh, always make sure that you pass. Like, uh, I would say you're completely ready for the exam when you have more than 90% of those on those tests. That would be a good indicator. Mm -hmm. Yevgenia, you wanted also to mention something? Yeah, yeah. So um, like I had 75 uh the day before my cbap certification and i passed um, another stuff uh, that um, basically cbap uh, doesn't tell you uh, like what percentage gives you the, the pass score so you never know because after you passed or, or not passed you share like uh, okay you have that much percentage of answers uh, in each knowledge area and, and just the result, pass or not pass. And uh, uh, we compare it with uh, like my results with uh, those who uh, haven't passed. And like the total was uh, almost the same, but probably they um, evaluate some knowledge areas more than others. So that's uh, another, <laughs> you know, <laughs> thing mm -hmm. to consider. So you, you'll never know. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, just to complete on what Evgenia said, uh, you do have the percentages when you subscribe for the exam, they give you the percentages of the questions. And in order to pass the exam, you don't need to have a, a particular grade, but you need to do better than the majority of people taking the same exam at the, the same period that you're taking. So you need to be pretty much better than them at at least four knowledge areas, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Uh, courses of, of the time, uh, I would like to uh, thank you all for participating in today's roundtable and for providing your answers. Uh, I hope it was very informative for our audience. Uh, we also have a couple of questions that are available on the Community Z portal. So if ever you would have a moment of time, if you could go there to, to answer those ones that haven't been answered yet throughout today's session, I would greatly appreciate that. And I'm sure that our audience will appreciate this as well. Um, once again, thank you so much for being part of today's Community Z. Uh, discussion about certification and uh, now I feel very much motivated to, to participate in CBAP myself so I will definitely reach out to you for some uh, mentoring and preparation uh, and for those of you who are watching us online please be sure to check what other topics do we have planned for for the rest of the day and for now wishing you all a wonderful day please stay safe stay healthy stay happy wishing you a great weekend and hopefully speak to you again in the future thank you Jan thank you thank you, thank you everyone else bye Bye-bye.